Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. Today we're going to be talking about a crypto coin. Please don't forget to like this video. If you do, hit the notification and subscriptions buttons so you don't miss out on future videos when they're produced. Who is the crypto queen? In June 2016 at Wembley Arena, a star took the stage. In front of thousands of people to rapturous applause and this girl is on fire playing loudly, the crypto queen stepped onto the stage. Wearing an expensive ball gown, diamond earrings and bright red lipstick, she addressed the cheering crowd. Ruja Ignatova is this self-proclaimed crypto queen. She had invented a cryptocurrency called OneCoin, a crypto that would rival Bitcoin and people invested billions of dollars in her vision. In 2017 she disappeared and hasn't been seen since. Not a single one coin has ever been issued to any investor and in her wake she left thousands if not hundreds of thousands of investors with nothing. Countries all around the world and agencies like the FBI have warrants out for her arrest. Of Ruja, nothing has been seen since 2017 and scant clues as to her whereabouts have been found. What happened? And how did approximately 4 billion of investors money go missing? As we explore Ruja, OneCoin and her disappearance, we will see that the OneCoin fraud contains the elements of a Ponzi scheme, a pyramid scheme and a multi-level marketing or MLM scheme all combining to create one massive fraud. Background Let's take a closer look at Ruja and the events leading up to her disappearance in 2017. Ruja Ignatova was born in Bulgaria on the 30th of May 1980. She emigrated to Germany with her family when she was 10 and spent at least part of her childhood in Baden-Württemberg. She was an extremely intelligent student and in 2005 earned a PhD in European private law. She continued her studies in Oxford and began a career working for the world's leading management consultancy firm, McKinsey. The first time we hear about her problematic forays into the business world was when she and her father, Playman, bought a metallurgical complex in Bavaria. What is understood is that Ruja and her father purchased the business and in 2011 it had faced financial difficulties. In 2012 the Ignatovas had sold the business to the new owner Rudolf Keller. However, within nine days Keller had had to put the business into administration. Apparently the Ignatovs had falsified records to make the business look profitable and solvent. Not only had they taken the money for the sale, but they had actually transferred a lot of the company's assets to Bulgaria prior to the sale. Law enforcement caught up with them and Ruja was given a suspended sentence of 14 months. Now the second time we hear about Ruja was with a forerunner of one coin called Bigcoin. Bigcoin was an MLM or multi-level marketing scheme that used a lot of selling techniques that Ruja employed when she started to promote Bigcoin. We'll discuss more about those shortly. It originated with a Hong Kong based promoter called John Ung. The investor base was predominantly Chinese and Ruja was one of the promoters. The problem for Bitcoin arose through its structure. It only had value inside the structure of Bitcoin itself. There was no way of getting value by selling outside the structure. Now to get around this, the owners of Bitcoin had an idea. They would put the whole structure inside a company called Crypto Real Investment Trust and then sell shares in the company. People with Bitcoin could exchange their Bitcoin for shares. However, the internal value of Bitcoin crashed, effectively making the whole scheme worthless. Today, the Crypto Real Investment Trust shares remain pending. The stage was now set for one coin. Cryptocurrencies explained. Before we take a look at OneCoin in detail, let's take a closer look at cryptocurrencies and how they work. There are many cryptocurrencies around the world and most work in a similar way, but we'll take a look at just one of them, Bitcoin. I'm going to keep this at a very high level so that you get a flavour of what's going on. Let us say that you and RJ Impact are sitting on a park at lunch and you decide to give me your remaining sandwich. I now have a sandwich and you have nothing. So how do we know that happened? Well, simple really. You have nothing and I have the sandwich. Not complicated, hey? But what if I wanted to give you something digital, like a photo or something? Well, you know you have the photo, right? You can see it on your phone or computer. 
But how do you know that I didn't save a copy, or also send the same copy to a friend? How do you know it's only yours? Difficult, hey? Obviously, giving something digitally is not the same as giving something physically. So how do we solve this? Well, let's get back to the sandwich. If we were going to prove to a third party that you gave the sandwich to RJ Impact, then we could create a ledger. It starts off with a sandwich in the column for you, and then we record the sandwich transfer to RJ Impact. You sign that transfer to say that you made the transfer. Great. If anyone asks me whether the sandwich belongs to me, then I'll show them the ledger, signed by you, and everyone's happy. So, could we create a ledger such that digital transactions could be traced? How do we know that someone couldn't just add a digital transaction under their column and gain more value, or delete a transfer so that they could do it again, and send the same asset to another person? Yes, it's complicated, isn't it? The solution. What if we gave the ledger to everyone every time a transaction happened, with a full history of all transactions in digital sandwiches or photos that have ever happened? No one person looks after the ledger, everyone gets the updated copy every time a new transaction takes place. We'll call this the public ledger. But who checks the ledger is correct? Well, people who put their time and effort into checking it get rewarded every now and again with an extra digital sandwich. This process of checking and creating the ledger is called mining. Also, before you and I accept the ledger is correct, we can make sure that say 10 people have all verified a transaction, then we accept it. Can you do this digitally? Yes. The ledger in the Bitcoin world is called the blockchain and all the fancy computer programs that verify the transactions are all open for anyone to look at. OK, well it isn't sandwiches that we record in the ledger, it's a digital asset called a Bitcoin and it is these virtual assets that are transferred from person to person or digital account to digital account via the ledger. I have cut a lot of the technicalities out here, but that is essentially how things do work. But what is this Bitcoin worth when it has only been created as something digital out of nowhere? Well, the simple answer is whatever people are willing to pay for it. There is a whole economic and quasi-philosophical debate that you can get into over the price and value of Bitcoin or any other currency or asset for that matter, but that's for another day. At the time of recording this, a single Bitcoin today is worth over 50,000 US dollars. One coin. In late 2014, Ruja Ignatova, her brother Konstantin Ignatova and a colleague from the Bitcoin swindle, Sebastian Greenwood, set up a company in Bulgaria called OneCoin Limited. Unlike Bitcoin, this did not have a public ledger and all transactions were controlled by OneCoin on its own servers. Apparently it was safer this way. OneCoin was set up as a company that ostensibly sold educational marketing material primarily for trading purposes. You buy an educational package for between €100 Euros and €118,000 and the packages contain tokens which can be exchanged to mine OneCoins. The launch of the company was extremely successful. According to sources in the period up to the third quarter 2016 Revenues amounted to some 3.3 billion euros and the network had over 3 million people. The educational material, however, was really a front, as at all meetings recruiters talked about investing in cryptocurrency and OneCoin particularly. OneCoins could be exchanged internally via an exchange called XCoinX and could be exchanged for euros. The amount of euros available was limited however and was based on the value of the educational package that you purchased. The exchange was shut down in March 2016 although some people affiliated to the scheme continued to accept funds. In early 2015 the price of a OneCoin was stated by OneCoin themselves as 0.5 euros. Five years later the price was set at 30 euros. Apparently, this extraordinary growth was caused by the popularity and demand for OneCoin. The main targets of the company were not sophisticated investors, but people who did not know much about cryptocurrencies. In 2015, there were far fewer people with knowledge of cryptocurrencies generally. And the reasons for OneCoin's success include Powerful advertising, 
a lot of money was spent on the development of the brand. The multi-level marketing strategy whereby investors would actively seek out new investors getting OneCoin rewards for doing so. Countless webinars and websites together with a spread into a large number of countries and last but not least the zeal of and cult of personality that accompanied Ruja Ignatova. So what was the problem? Well, the cryptocurrency OneCoin didn't really exist. It only actually existed in the minds of the creators and its investors. The OneCoins were just numbers written into the scheme's computers and the words mining and blockchain were just that, words. According to one report, the only accumulations that investors have made are fantasies. OneCoin was a hidden Ponzi scheme. The small amount of withdrawals in real currency that the investors were allowed was funded by new investments. Eventually the scheme stopped real currency withdrawal at all, probably because the value that people were wishing to withdraw was outweighing the new value coming in. OneCoin told people that the closure was in connection with the preparation of the project for an ICO and after which the OneCoin would appear on exchanges all around the world. However, the ICO kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed and to this date has never actually become official. In late 2016, the Hungarian Central Bank declared OneCoin as a Ponzi scheme. This set the trigger for a number of authorities from other countries to effectively close the scheme down in their jurisdictions and they seized whatever assets they could. In the summer of 2017, the Indian authorities accused Ruja and 30 others of fraud and put them on their wanted list. In autumn 2017, the self-styled crypto queen was unstoppable. In October 2017, she failed to appear at a OneCoin event in Portugal. Frantic phone calls, emails and messages went unanswered. No one had heard anything at OneCoin's head office in the Bulgarian capital Sofia. Something was seriously wrong. Ruja's brother, Constantin, took over the operation and he transferred its activities to Argentina. In March 2019, the FBI arrested Constantin in Los Angeles. Apparently, Constantin has been helping the authorities ever since and as at March 2021, is out on jail on bond of $500,000 and is awaiting sentencing in May 2021. As part of his plea deal, he may enter into the witness protection program. So where is Ruja now? This is a complete mystery. We know that she made some contingency plans visiting Kyrgyzstan to obtain a passport. We also know that she was planning to elope with her married man, Gilbert Armanta. He was in fact cooperating with the FBI in return for a favourable sentencing when he pled guilty to fraud associated with the OneCoin. After she discovered this, we know she fled, going to Athens with one of her security guards. OneCoin hired private investigators to find her, but without luck. According to Nikolai Stoyanov, a Bulgarian investigative journalist who has been following the case, there is no guarantee that Ruja is even alive. She may be in the UAE, where extradition to the USA is not possible, but no one can be sure. He says the story is not over yet. Even recently, the BBC have seen documents which suggest that the fraud may have been as much as $16 billion. The BBC have also investigated reports that Ruja was based in Frankfurt. According to one email cited in the US legal process, Ruja had discussed with Greenwood what would happen if one coin fell apart. Take the money and run, and blame someone else, she wrote. Case study to highlight the impact that these Ponzi or pyramid frauds have on individuals, we'll take a look at one investor's story. Jen McAdam invested about £8,000 of her own money in the scheme and persuaded family and friends to put in another £220,000 before realising she was not going to get her money back. After realising she had been duped, Jen started to campaign to warn others of the fraud. The 49-year-old revealed that she had received scores of messages, mainly through Facebook, threatening her with sexual violence and death in what she claims are coordinated attacks by OneCoin supporters and has now reported the threats to the police in Scotland. She said, It is horrible. The abuse is vile and the threats feel very real to me. I'm always looking over my shoulder now. Legacy 
The sad part about this fraud is that it is still operating today. It was only at the end of 2019 that their main website was shut down, but there are clones operating, which implies that someone somewhere is still orchestrating the fraud. There is now talk of a film being proposed with Kate Winslet, identified as playing Jen McAdam. Konstantin Ignatova, who has been cooperating with the FBI, is waiting sentencing in the US, where he faces up to 20 years for wire fraud conspiracy. Sebastian Greenwood is waiting trial for wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, securities fraud and other covert acts meant to defraud. Mark Scott, the lawyer for OneCoin, was convicted of two federal felonies, including conspiracy to commit money laundering and conspiracy to commit bank fraud. He is awaiting sentencing and he is facing up to 50 years in jail on sentencing. Finally, there are questions to be asked for the regulators and regulatory system, particularly in Europe, who allowed this fraud to continue for so long and so publicly. For all the investors, unfortunately, there is little to no chance of ever seeing their money again. There is only one conclusion to this story. It's a fraud.